if, British and if I can say so, if I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with the race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be checking a, a video where Douglas Murray is one of the speakers titled What Should We Do About Returning Jihadists? I believe this is going to be interesting. Let's start with the video. Go. Douglas Murray is at it again. In the iconic interview on BBC, he debates a Muslim about policies around how returning jihadists who have committed crimes overseas should be treated by the government and the broader impact of the Islamic religion in Western culture. Douglas Murray argued that the traditional route of prosecution faces significant obstacles, primarily due to the difficulty in gathering concrete evidence against individuals who have committed crimes overseas. As a result, he advocated for a multifaceted strategy to address this issue. He also addressed the elephant in the room, the influence of religion in shaping the views of people who become jihadists. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. Miriam, why do you say that it's a, a racial, there's a racial aspect to taking away somebody's citizenship if they're suspected to be an is Islamic extremist? Because where are you supposedly sending them back to? Let's take the most recent case of a uh, young man who is half, um, who's got, who's of Vietnamese origin, but who's a British citizen. This is the one we going know? through the Supreme Court. The Absolutely, appeal. he's mm -hmm. going through the Supreme Court at the moment. Uh, Britain wants to take away his citizenship. Uh, Viet Vietnam says he's got nothing to do with this. He's not a Vietnamese citizen as far as they're concerned. The only reason that we can consider taking away his citizenship is because we do not regard him no. as fully British. No, and that I, is a racialized case. If I could just, if I could just correct, Douglas, if, I could really, ju if I could just correct <laughs> that's that. Correct me, the problem about uh, about uh, what Miriam's just said, among other things, is you can do the experiment, thought experiment, another way. Let's say um, a, a, a pseudo state was set up in another country in the world. It's not and a state. It, uh, I, I know it's not a state. You know it's not a state. They think they're a state. They call themselves a state, and a lot of people who burn their passports or go over to fight for them, believe they are a state. Let's pretend another pseudo-state was set up from any other religious or other kind of background. If people from Britain were going to that state of any background or any origin, and they were cutting off people's heads and raping women and children and so on, I think this country would take a rather tough stance about it. And I think, among other things, one of the things we would look at was withdrawal of passports, among other things. If you say you are signed up to this uh, appalling state, Mi then maybe we take you at your word. Miriam's case is there is a racial element. Oh, but there should not be. No, be. And you I, 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 if I but I think so something Miriam said that uh, we really must come back on is that somebody is not considered fully British. Absolutely. You are either British or you're not. Well, then you no can't withdraw somebody's and, citizenship. And They're it, British and if citizens, I can say so, so we have to deal with If I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. They follow certain principles, misguided in your opinion, misguided in my opinion, but certain principles that they say they derive from Islam. All right, let and Miriam any discussion that. of this has to take them at their let word to that. some extent. Well, I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we would sort of try and essentialize Islamic State. They're very much like any cult or, uh, if you like, I, I, I think you can, you can look, look at their if origins. Finish, if, you, if you compare them to any sort of cult or gang, there are usually uh, some similarities with the broader concept from which they're, they're derived. So you get cults that are derived from Christianity. Sure. Very similarly, you would say that Daesh or Islamic State is derived from um, Islam, Islam in some way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is to take things at face value yeah, and to certainly to corroborate their narrative by no, accepting their view that I'm it is a state their view. and that no, they no, have I'm the legitimacy to call out. themselves it, Islamic. It, it, it's uh, problematic. The, the WACO group in Waco uh, some years ago, everyone was interested in the religious claims they were making when they decided to become this millenarium crazy cult. I, uh, can if I, just, I can just finish, yeah. this, is a, this is a crucial thing we cannot avoid. I know it's uncomfortable, I know we want to keep no, no, avoiding it's not, it. It's not the 
religious all. aspect, think, which Miriam didn't want to talk about, is no, an, a I, vital I part was, of this discussion. If I thought and it was, it's reliant I upon Mus Muslims all right. of all kinds to if, take if that on and tackle it. If I thought it was vital, Douglas, it. I absolutely would bring it back. But I think what's important is when you look at, for example, these rehabilitation programs, because that's what we're talking about here, is how to deal most effectively with a threat, is that we are talking about using methods that have been shown to be effective in other contexts and with other groups. Yeah, and and those are, can I, just, can I just finish? They are, they are methods that have been used in criminology and criminal studies oh. for decades, and they've got nothing to do with Islam. They just happen no. to okay. be effective. We're gonna, we're gonna but have ISIS to let you does have this. a lot to do with Islam. We're so. going to have to Douglas Murray's stance on addressing the complexities of jihadists, returning to the UK emphasizes a crucial aspect often overlooked, the influence of Islamic religion on extremism. Murray points out that even if jihadists misinterpret Islam, the religion's perceived influence on their actions cannot be ignored. Douglas Murray has been vocal about the challenges of integrating Islamic beliefs within Western societies, particularly concerning the radical interpretations that lead to jihadist ideologies. He, alongside other commentators like Sam Harris and Ayan Hirsi Ali, points out that while the majority of Muslims live peacefully, there's a non-negligible fraction whose interpretation of Islam poses a security threat. Harris and Hirsi Ali emphasized the need for a candid conversation about the elements within Islamic doctrine that jihadists exploit to justify violence. Murray's argument is that ignoring the ideological roots of jihadism under the guise of cultural sensitivity not only hinders the fight against extremism, but also fails to protect the values of liberal democracy. I totally agree with Douglas Murray on this one. In a society that prizes free speech, addressing the root causes of ideological extremism is essential especially when these ideologies stem from religious interpretations that clash with democratic values. Simply enacting policies without engaging with the underlying beliefs can be ineffectual. It's important to foster open dialogues about religion, where constructive criticism is distinguished from phobia or hate speech. We should be able to talk about the influence of Islam on certain people without being labeled as Islamophobic. This is what free speech is all about. Uh, what a very heated uh, the bait uh, by Douglas Murray. Uh, we can all tell in this video Douglas Murray uh, was talking about our returning jihadists who has committed a uh, crime overseas uh, should be treated by the government. Uh, he also uh, argued that uh, the traditional route of persecution faces uh, challenges because of uh, the difficulty in gathering evidence uh, against those people. Douglas Murray also highlighted that uh, a better strategy should be set in place in order to be able to uh, 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 get concrete evidence uh, against uh, those people. And he also mentioned the influence of uh, religion in shaping the view of the jihadists. Because, you know, a lot of these jihadists, uh, uh, they justify their action using uh, Islam, using the Quran, because the pick uh the pick some verses from the Quran uh misinterpret uh the verses to suit their own purpose misinterpret uh the verses to suit their own ideology and they also tend to you know recruit recruit people recruit people to uh, uh recruit people to uh, using the using Islam using the Quran uh for their own uh, uh selfish uh for their own selfish motive for their own political motive which I believe. Uh, is totally wrong, which I believe is totally wrong. That's what uh, Douglas Murray uh, was trying to address uh, in this debate, that the government uh, should uh, set uh, a better strategy. Uh, the government should set a better strategy in order to be able to address this issue, in order to be able to gather concrete evidence uh, against this uh, jihadists. Because, you know, when they uh, leave UK to their own country uh, to support uh, uh, jihad is very difficult to to get evidence uh against uh against these people and that's why uh Douglas Murray uh stated that uh uh the traditional route of persecution uh faces uh challenges due to the difficulty in getting concrete evidence against these people so and um, i believe a better strategy should be set in place in order to be able to uh uh get uh uh concrete evidence against these people because you can't persecute someone when you don't get any evidence uh against against the person. Uh you can't you can't persecute someone before you are able to uh 
persecute someone, you, you must have evidence against the person that he has actually committed uh, the crime you are talking of. And that's why uh, Douglas Nui is advocating uh, in this video that uh, a better strategy should be set, uh, should be set, uh, should be set by the government in order to be able to get concrete evidence against these people. You can tell Douglas Nui is a very uh, intelligent and learned person. Just listening to him, I've learned a lot. I believe you also do. So keep the comments coming. How do you think uh, returning jihadists uh, should be treated? How do you think the government can get concrete evidence against this uh, returning jihadists? Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.